We are in the golden age of 164 scale collecting right now. There is more cool stuff out there than you can possibly put in your collection, especially if you're open to other brands aside from like the major ones. Um, there's just too much. You're, there's no way you're going to be able to get it all. So if you do find something you like and it's sold out, but you can't get it, find something else you like because it's pretty easy to do and pick that up instead. Jeremy here from Common Collected. Today I have a special interview with a guest, Dave, from Champion DJK, the YouTube channel. For that person that's that's literally just discovered Hot Wheels, like as mm -hmm. an adult, and they're buying all the dollar cars they can every time they go to the grocery store, like yeah. what's your advice to them? My advice is just buy what you like. And if you've eventually changed your mind and you don't like it anymore, sell it and buy something else. Um, you know, it's fun. It's, it's, it's interesting to think about what motivates people to collect. And I've always thought inward about that a lot, you know, and, and I still really don't know. I, uh, maybe it's just, I like trying to, sometimes you like trying to complete sets, you know, sometimes you just like amassing things and maybe that's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, so uh, one of the things I'm debating on right now is exactly how to organize these and definitely make friends in your community. If there are other people out there, um, that are, you know, hunting and you're going to run into them at the pegs. If you start going to the peg, you're going to start running into people, talk to those people. Most of the time you'll find that they're pretty cool. They're nice. You might get involved in a local club, um, which I'm fortunate enough to have here. And that's just fantastic. Cause I, you know, then you have all these people around you that are kind of into the same thing. You stop, you know, you're not feeling as much like a, like a dork that's playing with toy cars anymore because you got peers and then, um, you know, and they help you find stuff. You learn stuff along the way. And, you know, as long as it continues to be fun for you, continue to do it. If it brings you joy, I guess that's my opinion. But yeah. So, it's so funny because I feel like if, if I'm looking for hot wheels or matchbox and there's kids around, I, I'm fine. But if there's another adult, now I feel like, oh, no, there's two of us. And I try to, like, hide. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't hide. Say hi. You know, say hi. And then, you know, I can't guarantee they're going to be warm and welcoming to you. But, you know, if you can get, like, a community of collectors around your area, it works out so much better than trying to, like, make it a competition and try to find stuff. Yeah, there's people, the people that, are able to go and do that crack the cases open get the supers every single time they got ties in you know ties with all the stores and i used to kind of be that way um to a degree but yeah i just i like the the lazy collecting i don't really need to you know hunt hard that's the other thing if it starts to stress you out if you're stressed out because you're missing out on something then you're just kind of in the wrong hobby you know you just they gotta learn to relax and just collect cool stuff and honestly get into stuff other than hot wheels because that stuff there's not as much competition for and you know you can't find it in the stores anyway most of it so you got to order it online and it becomes an ebay competition which is hey, you can do that right from your house so what are the different ways that you buy cars and like like what percentage maybe walmart target compared to ebay compared to swapping with collectors the majority of stuff that i get i get uh, probably at our local meet now. So we, we have a local group of people that gets together, you know, once every month and it's open to the public. Anybody can come and shop. We all set up tables. It's cheap. We have, you know, it's cheap to set up tables anyway. Got together with a couple of my uh, local Hot Wheels buddies. We're having a little bit of a rummage sale tomorrow. Um, this whole like wall area is all one dude. And that is my Hot Wheels buddy Chuck, which if you watch my videos, um, you've heard me talk about him before. Um, basically a really great guy. And some people have some fantastic stuff. But anyway, you always find something new there. So I love going to those things. I like going to, in the summer, you can go to some car shows and stuff like that. And generally they'll have vendors of people setting up and selling. But Really, it is. I've got some relationships with some hobby dealers that I've used over the past that I found that, that I've given really good customer service. So I order the majority of my stuff from them. And then uh, the other stuff, you know, the stuff where you, Facebook groups are another good one. So Facebook groups where you got somebody that buys collections and they sell it in a group. That's another one you can really find some cool stuff. 
And then, so I would say it's hard to put percentages on it, but I would say definitely the majority of my stuff is not from big box stores. I do occasionally, you know, walk in. And if I do see like recently, I saw the new uh, Fast and the Furious set, premium set popped up at Target. I found, well, I found four of the five cars or whatever, but, but I picked those up and, you know, some of this stuff, I don't, I don't sweat it. If I find it, I find it. Um, otherwise if I really want something and I know I'm really going to want it, I'm not going to bother, uh, relying on Walmart or target. I'm going to just order it from somebody. And the, the little extra that you may pay over peg price with shipping and all that is just so worth it when you're not, it, you know, number one, you're not stressed about finding it. And number two, uh, you know, you're not wasting a bunch of gas driving in time, driving all over the place when you could just click, click, boom, it comes to your house when it's, when it's ready to come there. So, so how much of what you buy, did you know that it was coming from online research or, or how much was just a surprise? Well, I'm kind of in the loop with what's coming out. Typically I do, you know, cause I do write for Lamley. Um, along with David Tilly and actually, and we are in like this WhatsApp, you know, little discussion group together with me, John Lambert, um, and then the other writers, rarely do I get snuck something that's not already out there though. I mean, you've got just, you know, you just jump on Instagram. Um, Instagram is probably, I would say the best place for news other than you know, brand specific stuff, like let's just say Greenlight, for example. Here's a pro tip. Um, follow Greenlight on, on Flickr, okay? They post all their images before, I believe- Wait, what's before Flickr? No, I'm just Flickr. kidding. <laughs> Flickr, and see, I, you know, I use it for that only. But anytime they're, you know, they take photos for whatever they're going to show up and pre-order stuff for hobby dealers and all that stuff, they put them on their Flickr account. So you can see, you know, you get a lot of previews before anything else just from that account. That's a, that's a tip for you there if you're into green light. But yeah, other than that, I mean, the information is just out there all the time. There's T-Hunted, of course, which is probably the most famous uh, Hot Wheels sneak kind of thing. And uh, I mean, they're on Instagram, so you can follow them there. Um, you know, they have a website as well, of course. So there's information out all over the place. Do you have self-imposed rules about what you're allowed to collect and what you're not? Like, do uh, you do you ever think to yourself, ooh, I want that, but no, I have a rule. I'm not allowed to buy those. Uh, the only rule that I have is um, nothing other than 164 scale. That's it. Don't. And I've opened Pandora's box a couple times and been able to just shut it right back down because, you know, and that's, if you start getting into, and, it's, and that's a natural progression too, by the way, when you're going from Hot Wheels and Hot Wheels are great, not saying they're not detailed and stuff like that, but when you start going from Hot Wheels to like really detailed premium brands and stuff, the next thing is, oh, wow, these 143rd scale cars are like super detailed and look really good. And like, oh, my God, and like some of these, you know, 124, 118 scale cars just look beautiful. And and I just tell myself, don't do it. <laughs> just don't do it. And then it's uh, a whole nother ball game with storing them. They get bigger. Yeah, oh, and my like... goodness. Yeah. Displaying and storing them. It's just 164 scales, my scale. You know, I have I have a couple of cars in the collection that are a little bit larger scale that I've, you know, kept for whatever reason. Um, but we're going to try to just keep it to that and just buy, you know, the 164 scale stuff. But there is no like there's no brand I won't buy. There's no, you know, there's brands I don't collect very often um, or don't pick up anything very often. But if I do find something interesting, I don't care what brand it is. And actually, I prefer it to be something uncommon because then I can show it in a video and then maybe someone else like, I didn't even know that existed and I want one. Some of those I want to get all the variations of. I don't really care about the chases in green light, um, whatever. So I'm kind of like making rules as I go along with collecting, which you kind of need to do. You kind of need to really figure out what your goal is and what you want to do with your collection and kind of having goals with your collection makes collecting fun.
And it is fun though. You should make up arbitrary rules. I know I've got one friend that I talk to all the time on Facebook about collecting. Um, he literally sets a price limit. Okay. So he will not buy a single item. If he can't get it cheaper than X amount of dollars, like no matter what it is, he should, it's, it's off the list period. So, I mean, it's cool to set those little guidelines like, okay, I'm only going to collect Hot Wheels. That's fine. If that's all you want to collect, go ahead and do that. You know, set limits to your collection, collect what you like. Don't get like hung up in the hype. There's too many people that, and it's fine. I mean, good for them, I guess. But if you want to stay sane in this hobby, don't think that you have to have everything that people are posting to Instagram. Like, don't think you need to have you know, I'm going to use it as an example, a Datsun 510 wagon super. Okay. I don't have one, you know, I wish I did, but I don't. And now it's like way out of my price range. Like back in the day when I used to buy, used to buy those things for what, like 50 bucks or something even cheaper, probably back in the day. Um, you know, I wish I would have, but I'm not going to lose sleep over getting that car. I wish I had time to do, get into diorama building. Um, and making some really cool stuff or i wish i at least had something really cool that i could use in my photography but that's a whole nother rabbit hole hobby to go down that i just don't not today don't have yeah, time to do but it like <clears throat> likewise like i stopped myself from doing those those kinds of things actually i stopped myself at this point from even customizing at all because i don't do that anymore either because so. i i mean i would be willing to i have an interest in it i i'm i'm artistic and when I was a kid, I built models and painted them, but mm. I'm already collecting and I have a YouTube channel. I don't have time to also, also be a customizer. Yeah, it's just you got to if you really want to do something, you got to kind of stick to one thing and kind of do it. And, you know, there's no sense of going half in on, on stuff. So and that's why I just don't really customize anymore. I still have all my stuff, you know, from when I did customize, I got a ton of real real riders. I could swap on the cars and all sorts of stuff. Actually, this is the first one I think I'm going to add lights to. I'm going to put headlights in this. I just picked up one of these uh, jeweler saws. Try to cut out some hoods, make some convertibles and stuff. So I got picked up that. And maybe down the road, my son or something or daughter even will want to do something like that. Might think that's fun and we'll bust that stuff out and use it and uh or you know maybe i'll end up just giving it to somebody that that can use it so it's just kind of cool you get different reactions from from family and people you know or even co-workers what's it like for you uh as relating with people in your life who don't collect um i you know i don't really i guess bring it up you know i i do you know tell people i have a youtube channel and all that stuff and if they want to check it out i mean i'm not I mean, obviously I'm comfortable in my skin collect <laughs> collecting and letting everybody know I collect. I love when, you know, when we do have family over and stuff like that, that I don't get to see very often, you know, I'll bring you down into the room and kind of show you how psychotic I am if you want to check it out. So, <laughs> and they're always like, uh, <laughs> you know, like what is going on in here? And, and, so, right. At first they're like, oh no, this is a problem. And you oh, explain yeah. to them a little bit about it and then they're like oh okay it is cool uh, yeah you know usually in sadly i mean the the angle that you have to go at it when you start explaining it to them from a value proposition being you know this is this is worth something and will be worth something you know if i ever do decide to seriously downsize or if I ever decide to just give it up completely, which I doubt is ever going to happen. But if I ever do, or, you know, eventually hand it down to my children or whatever it is, um, you know, it's got value. So it seems like that's what it takes anyway, to get non-collectors to uh, think that this is worth it, you know? So I don't know if I should do it by tooling, like put all the Trans Ams together, which is kind of how it is now in some spots like as you can see there's there's all these trans ams together trans am ultra reds there's an ultra raw right there you're never really bored when you are trying to collect something when you're trying to go after something and then each little time you check something off the list that you get a sense of accomplishment and i think you know practicing getting a sense of accomplishment which you get to do over and over and over with collecting, it spills over into life and anything else that you're trying to do. And if that elevates your mood, 
and keeps you a fairly happy person. Meaning if this hobby is bringing you joy, it's worth doing. And just a real quick example. I have another friend here um, who is a, a, a veteran um, who had memory loss issues. And just to give you another example of what collecting can do, um, his doctor uh, actually recommended that he starts collecting something. He goes, it practices developing memory, you know, and not having issues with memory. So that's what he started doing. He started collecting Funko Pops and Hot Wheels. And, uh, <laughs> and that's his like challenge to, you know, remember what he has, what he doesn't have and stuff like that. And kind of like, um, and he just gets joy out of it and, you know, and he was hurting before. So it, there's just a lot of cool things that can come from it. Can it get out of control? Absolutely. It can, but, uh, you know, as long as you stay in check, as long as you're staying happy, just keep on doing it. So, so much valuable information from Dave. We really appreciate the interview, but we had to cut it into small pieces. So if you like, there's another video of Dave right here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.